In this video, we're going to look at geometric mean in right triangles. And I want to be clear, for this video, we are not looking at the um, why, we're looking at the how. Meaning, I'm going to be teaching you just how to find these missing values using this relationship. I'm not going to uh, have time in this video to teach you why these relationships exist. So here's our diagram that we'll have for our examples here. And what you have is you got a right triangle here. I call this the little triangle. A right triangle here, I call this the medium triangle. And then you got your big overall right triangle. So there's three triangles in this picture. And the three triangles are actually similar. And we're not going to go into right now why they're similar. Um, that's the part that we'll, we'll save for another video on another day. But right now, since they're similar, there's certain relationships between the side lengths. There's proportions that you can set up. And so this first relationship, I call it the heartbeat. And you'll see why I call it the heartbeat in a minute. But what happens is, since these triangles are similar, C over G equals G over D, okay? This over this equals this over this. Now, if I were to take this proportion and we were to cross multiply and do G times G equals C times D, you would end up with G squared equals CD. And then if you took the square root of both sides of that equation, if you took the square root of this and the square root of this, you end up with G equals the root of C times D. In other words, this length is the geometric mean of this and this. Now, the idea of geometric mean just means you multiply them and you take the square root, okay? I tend to operate more off of the proportion. The proportion leads you to that geometric mean relationship, but if you can write this proportion, you can solve all the problems you need to solve. Now, I'm going to tell you why I call this the heartbeat. If you've ever been watching like uh, shoes, uh, shows about like the emergency room or doctors and stuff, you see little heartbeat monitors. They go boop, 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 boop. And so if you have that, look, look at our triangle right here. We go C over G equals G over D. C over G equals G over D. It looks like that heart rate monitor. C over G equals G over D. So that's why I call that first relationship the heartbeat. Now, let's look at our second relationship. I call this one the Nike check. And we've got another relationship of proportional sides. And this one's C over B equals B over F, this whole side. So C over B equals B over F. That if you cross multiply, b times b would be b squared, and c times f would be cf, and then if you take the square root of both sides, you would end up finding that b equals the square root of cf. Because so when you take the square root of this, you get b, and when you take the square root of this, you get cf. So once again, b is the geometric mean of c and f. But once again, I tend to operate more out of the proportion. The proportion leads you to the geometric mean relationship, um, but I like to use the proportion. And I'm going to tell you why I call this one the Nike check. So if I do C over B equals B over F, you can kind of think, I mean, yes, it's a bad Nike check, but kind of think of that looking like a Nike check. C over B equals B over F. C over B equals B over F, with F being this entire length across the bottom. Now, let's look at our last relationship, um, and then we're going to do two practice problems. So here's that same Nike check relationship. It's just going to be in reverse. So here we have that D over E equals E over F. D over E equals E over F. It's just a mirror of the one we did on the last slide. Instead of doing C over B equals B over F, we do D over E equals E over F. And so once you have that, you can cross multiply. And once you've cross multiplied, you can take the square root of both sides of your equation to get that. But once again, this is just like the, the Nike check, except it's gonna look even worse here, but it's D over E equals E over F. It's like a reverse Nike check, okay? so. Now that we've kind of established these proportions and the proportion that leads to the geometric mean relationship, um, I actually have my slide here that, that summarizes them. You got your heartbeat, C over G equals G over D. You got your Nike check, C over B equals B over F. And then you've got your reverse Nike check, D over E equals E over F. Now, now that we have that, let's do two example problems. So if we're looking right here, the first thing that throws us off about this question is the triangle has been flipped upside down. So let me kind of draw it the other way around. So you can see I kind of took this triangle and rotated it, and once I've oriented it the same way that our um, kind of previous discussion was oriented, then we can see, you know, I kind of want you to think, which, which of our relationships is going to be? Is this going to be like a, a Nike check situation, or a reverse Nike check situation, or is it going to be a heartbeat situation? And as I look at this, I think heartbeat. Because if I do 8 over x equals x over 18, 8 over x equals x over 18, that's our heartbeat, 8 over x equals x over 18. Once you're there, you can cross multiply. x times x is x squared, 8 times 18 is 144, 
And then we can solve by taking the square root of both sides, and you get that x is 12. That means that for this um, right triangle, this length right here is 12, because it's the geometric mean of 8 and 18. Let's look at our second example, and this will actually be our last example. Now, if we're looking at this one, looking, it looks like the heartbeat isn't really going to work for us because we're not looking for this side. 6 over something equals something over 4 would help us find this, but that we're looking for this part out here. So you might be saying, okay, what, what could we do here? This is going to be a Naki check situation. 6 over x equals x over, but this last part is over the whole thing. So that last part is over 10. So, so I'll kind of write it out, and then we'll unpack it a little bit. 6 over x equals x over 10. Now, let me show you that again. Let me erase my little Nike check right here. 6 over x equals x over 10, because 10 I get because it's the entire length there. So there when I cross multiply, x times x is x squared, 6 times 10 is 60, and then we're taking the square root of both sides. So we have x equals the square root of 60. Um, you could, that's not going to be a perfect square, you could turn it into a decimal. Um, but I'm going to look and see if there's any perfect square factors of that and try to simplify that. And when I think about it, I think my largest perfect square factor of 60 is going to be 4, because I could rewrite it as 4 times 15. And then the square root of 4 is 2. So um, this is technically the right answer, but if you want to simplify it all the way, um, it would be 2 roots of 15 would be the best answer. So to summarize, I'm going to go back to this slide. Here are the three relationships you need to know. Here they are represented as proportions. Here they are represented as geometric mean. If you can execute those three types of problems, you're good to go for this lesson.